Hi, I'm Sifu Grant from Darsana Martial Arts, and today I'm going to be showing you some silk reeling exercises. Specifically, I'm going to be focusing on the circular motions of the arms that can be done uh, in combination with each other, and we're going to focus on seeing how these different patterns look in all three planes of movement. So we have the frontal plane, and I'm going to use a prop to show you what that looks like. So the frontal plane is this plane. It's like your steering wheel. And uh, it goes across the front of your body or the back of your body. And basically, if you were thinking about the plane as it moves through your body, it would be cutting you in half front to back. The horizontal plane is just like this. Like a lazy Susan, like a desk or a table. And it's just a flat plane that would be cutting you in half, top to bottom. And then there's the sagittal plane, which moves front to back. If I turn it to the side, it might be easier to see. It moves front to back. And if it was cutting you in half, it would split you left from right. And you can move your body and your arms in circular patterns in all three dimensions. And by then linking circular patterns, moving circularly from one dimension into another, you can create patterns of motion that are continuous. They never stop moving and flowing. You wouldn't have to stop and start your energy. And then this will eventually lead into the coordination necessary for applications of receiving and redirecting force in a variety of different ways, and essentially in infinite ways. So, one of the most basic exercises in Chen Tai Chi is a single arm outer circle, usually done in a semi-horse stance. But you don't have to do it in this, but just to show it clearly, I'm going to be performing it in a wider stance. And the right hand is going to begin with my middle finger in line with my chest. My left hand is going to be in a C shape, sort of cupped over my quad, my left quad, which is basically the top of my left hip joint. And using the sink and rise in my legs and the shift from one foot to the other, the turning of my pelvis and my waist, I'm going to be generating a circular energy starting emanating out circularly from the core of my pelvis, the dantian, and then being expressed in my hands. So this one's going to go up and out and down and in. Notice that my shoulder and elbow stay down and notice that my legs drive the movement. My waist and pelvis steer it and my hand and arm are just the final expression of the energy that's moving through my whole body. All right. So to show you the circular pattern, I'm going to get my circle back, and I'm going to just show you the path from center to extension and back again. So this is the yin and the yang of this idea that my hand is going to come up and out, the yang phase of it, and once it reaches its greatest extension at about the middle of the circle here at its outer edge, then it's going to begin to return down and back, and up and out again, and down and back. And that's true whether it's going in that direction or this one. Now, when we get into using both hands in coordinated patterns, sometimes it can seem like the two hands are moving in a single circle like this. One of the most obvious examples of that is right in the beginning of the form, right here. It looks like the hands are traveling along the same circle. The truth is they're actually moving in their own independent circles. To illustrate this, here are my
my two circles. And just holding them both at my center while facing squarely, you'll see two paths away and back to center, one moving out to the right and back again, one moving out to the left and back again. So when I do the pattern I just showed you again, see if you can notice that both hands follow their own pattern away from center and back to center. So if I do that same movement in the form again, this very beginning motion where the arms are coming up, the arms are settling down, and then from here we go circling to the left and then out to the right. Notice how the right hand comes up center and the left goes out. And then the left hand draws back to center as the right goes out. Although they're moving in sync at the same time, the two tracks are actually independent of each other. Two circles, not one. So I'm going to be showing you some two-hand patterns, and we're going to look at them in all three dimensions, see some similarities and differences there. So we'll start with the front to plane. So just going from that very first pattern we just did, Notice that the motions are driven by my legs, steered by my waist, and expressed in my arms. Focused on keeping my shoulders relaxed, my elbows hanging down. Relaxing from the top of my head to my tailbone and sinking my weight through the centers of both feet. Focusing on keeping my hips relaxed so that my pelvis can move freely. Now reverse directions. It's the same idea. And then with my right arm out, left arm in, this pattern where the hands move opposite each other, both in the up and out circle. Or you can think of it as a positive circle. Oftentimes it's just called outer circle. Sometimes it's called the yang circle. But in every circle, every spiral, both yin and yang are represented equally. Otherwise, it's not Tai Chi, not Chen Tai Chi anyways. The whole concept of Tai Chi is the harmonious interaction between yin and yang. We reverse direction. So try to imagine those two circles that I held up in front of me earlier and see if you can see the way that the hands sort of paint or trace that pattern in the air as I move. starting at the center and splitting away from each other, you have this pattern. Now when you're practicing the form and you're looking for these circles, oftentimes they occur only in part, not in whole as a transitional movement into a different position, into another action. 
So oftentimes you'll move halfway through one pattern and then that pattern will transition into another pattern which then moves a quarter of the way through its circle and then it transitions and changes planes and so on and so forth. And you can emphasize a full extension in the arm, although for instance sometimes it's an elbow, etc, etc. So each one of these actions can play out or extend out to any one of the joints in the body. The shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, the palm. It doesn't have to complete its circle, and the circles don't have to be the complete range of motion of the shoulder. They can actually be very small. Same path same plane of motion, done smaller. Okay. The hands can start at center and go up and out and back and in. Notice that my body is still turning. When the hands start at the same spot, move through the same range of motion and return again, you can choose what way you want to turn what hand, at what point you want to express more out of. So you'll notice I'm turning with my right arm in the outer motion. And of course, the other direction. That's all the reciprocal patterns in the frontal plane. Let me show you what they look like in the horizontal plane. So for clarity's purpose, I'm going to be taking a right side forward stance somewhat to the side, sort of 45 degrees towards you, so hopefully you can see the horizontal trajectory. Now, going back to my props, when you do this exercise, you look at your frontal plane circles coming right out from your center and all you're really doing is all the same patterns flipped on their sides and flattened out. It still has the same the same basic idea of moving away from center out to the sides and returning in again. Just a little bit of a different feeling. Now it's important to note that just as the vertical frontal plane circles show a little bit of horizontal plane motion in them, so does the horizontal focus circle have some frontal vertical plane in them. Because you can't escape the fact that we have to move through all three dimensions. We're not two dimensional, we're three dimensional, and therefore our motion is always going to be three dimensional. Also, our joints can't just continue to rotate uh, completely continuous 360 degree rotation because we're not machines. So we have a limited range of motion and that also is going to factor in on how we're able to move the body. So just going right into the double hand motions. So even here where it'll look like sometimes that my hands are moving in the same circle they're not. It's also important to note that the center point of my body moves as I turn. So that means the circles themselves are moving. And so it's going to look visually, if you follow the path of my hands, like my hands are uh, my circles of my hands are overlapping, because they technically are, but they're not crossing each other if you think about the fact that their circular paths away and to center move along with the turn of my body. In other words, barring from my props again, it's the hardest part right here. 
As I turn, the circles turn with me. And already we're beginning to hint at the way that body movement and footwork also changes the plane of movement relative to the space around you and how that eventually is going to lead towards redirecting incoming force and applications, martial applications. Continuing with the patterns in the horizontal plane. One thing especially to watch out for is your knees, that they don't, for instance, buckle in, keep them out, keep them over your ankles, keep your weight in the center of your feet. It's very important that your alignment stay good. Otherwise, you're not gonna get the benefit from doing these exercises. One of the whole points of Tai Chi training is to learn how to have strong alignment in your whole body in every direction as you move. The same goes for your vertical axis from your head to the center of your pelvic floor. And that vertical axis should run straight through the core of your torso from head to tail. Now we're going to take a look at the sagittal plane. Now, interesting thing happens when the two circles moving away from center and towards center switch to the sagittal plane. They fold like butterflies. And in this case, when moving in the sagittal plane, in essence, the hands can seem to move along the same circle. And even though there can be a little bit of space between them, the circle can narrow right down on center, and you can kind of open it up a little bit like this. But for the most part, if you're purely moving in the sagittal plane, you actually are moving the hands on the same circle. So I'm gonna stand to the side and show you some of the patterns. Now, because the circles are parallel to each other, there are less patterns. There are less combinations of possibilities that the hand can, hands can move in, in sync uh, in a more or less reciprocal manner. We'll start with one in, one out. All the same principles of alignment apply.
when you're doing these circles, it's kind of similar to the concept of bicycle pedals. Because the action is reciprocal, and in the sagittal plane, it's essentially the same motion in the arms that you would be doing with the legs if you were riding a bicycle. So I find it helpful to use the analogy of bicycle pedals for my students so that they get the idea of the reciprocal motion. As one goes down, the other comes up. As one comes back, the other goes out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Then you just have the two hands together, and they're either moving up, out, and in, Now there's still a little bit of turn in the body here. As the hands go away and back to center. And that way you're not bringing the force directly back at your center. It's always going to be a little bit to one side or the other. So here I'm primarily again focusing on the turn in my left arm. Just switch that to my right arm. And up. Now I find with the two hands together, very important to think about your vertical axis, because the tendency is to want to reach the hands out. That's going to start to pull on your center. So make sure the crown of the head is held up. Pelvis, particularly the tailbone, is down. Weight's right in the center of your feet. And you keep it there even as you move the arms. And remember that the arms move circularly, so forward is actually up, out, and then down. And it has this sort of return action, rather than a linear reaching action that will have the tendency to make the muscles tense in the back, uh, attach the arms more rigidly to your center, and perhaps make balance difficult. Now the last one is kind of a fun coordination exercise which is the hands start together, move separately, and you'll notice that they meet again at the bottom. Now you can do this pattern slightly different if you want to start the hands together at a different point in the circle. So I started with my hands together at the top, and they're meeting at the bottom again, and once again at the top. But if I start my hands together in the front or back, they'll meet at the front, and then return and meet at the back of the circle. Technically, of the circles, they're just parallel to each other. And you'll see my waist is turning. A moment ago, I was moving my arms a little flat. You'll notice they're spiraling again. So when the arm is in, the palm is turned up, the pinky side of the hand close to my center. When the hand is going out, the palm is turning down, the pinky side away from my center. And um, that is all the two hand circular patterns in all three planes or in all three dimensions. And once your body gets used to moving in that way, you can begin to see it in the form. And as it becomes more and more a language of movement for you, and you learn to coordinate it with footwork, then you can really begin to just free flow, freestyle, soap reeling movement. And that's a lot of fun. So just we'll take a look at a couple of movements in the form and just see if you can see as I turn my body the different change in plane.
All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you get a lot out of it. Practice, play with it, get used to the feeling of coordinating these circles through your body, and we'll see you next time.